All right, welcome back. So today we are gonna be talking about how to rationalize a denominator when there is a radical in the denominator. Now this is going back to our radical laws or our radical rules if you wanna have a double R. We can't have a radical in our denominator. So we have to go through a process that we call rationalizing to convert that denominator into an integer. So if you have, for example, um, 3 over root 2, that's not fully simplified. We would have to rationalize that denominator to then eventually turn it into, uh, what's that, 3 root 2 over 2. This would be our final answer, and we are going to be talking about how to do that today in many different cases. So the first example is here. The directions just say rationalize. So right now we have the square root of 2 over 3. And to the untrained eye, you might say, oh, hey, Mr. Q, it is done. 3 is in the denominator. But remember, back to our radical rules, we can break it up into the square root of 2 over the square root of 3. And we currently have that radical in our denominator. So what we need to do is rationalize it. And the way we do it with a monomial is we're going to multiply both the top and the bottom or the numerator and the denominator by that radical, by that monomial. Because remember, what is the square root of 3 over the square root of 3? It's equal to 1. So we're not changing the value of this fraction at all. We're just changing the way it appears. So when we do that, we do square root of 2 times the square root of 3. That turns into square root of 6 over, now the square root of 3 times the square root of 3, that's the square root of 9, but we know that that's equal to just 3. So we end up with the square root of 6 over 3. And notice, we end up with 3, and that's what was underneath the radical. So we end up with only one of them. Okay, so here are two problems for you to try. Please try these out and fully simplify when you can. Please pause the video, attempt these two problems, and then resume when you're ready to check your answer. All right, so if you're listening to my voice, that means <clears throat> you have attempted examples A and B, and then you, you want to see the answers done. So again, we can break this up into the square root of 4 over the square root of 5. Now, you might say, wait a second, I know the square root of 4. That's 2. So we have 2 over the square root of 5. Sure. Totes my goats. So now we need to rationalize this. And to do that, we're going to multiply the top by root 5 and the bottom by root 5. In doing so, we end up with 2 root 5 over 5. Now, if you didn't simplify the square root of 4, you would have ended up with the square root of 20 over 5, and then the square root of 20 turns into 2 root 5. So 6 to 1, half a dozen the other, but we try to simplify as fully as possible. But since the direction said rationalize, then you could argue saying, oh, well, I didn't say to simplify. Touche, my friend, touche. So let's go over to example B. We have a square root of 7 over the square root of 8. Again, you might want to simplify the square root of 8 to 2 root 2, but for right now, we're just going to practice how to rationalize. So we're going to multiply the top by root 8 and the denominator by root 8. In doing so, we get the square root of 56 over 8. Let's break down the square root of 56. Well, 56 is 2 and 28, 4 and 7. So that means that this really turns into, what's that, uh, 2 root 14 over 8. Oh, wait, we can go one more. Oh, it's getting messy. This really turns into the square root of 14 over 4. Because we can cross out the 2 and the 8, simplify to 1 and 4. All right, good job, good job. Here we go. Let's talk about this example here. We have 15 over 9 root 5. Now, the first thing that we want to do is simplify if we can. Well, we can simplify 15 and 9. 
we can divide them by 3, so we get 5 and 3. So we now have 5 over 3 root 5. Now we cannot do 5 divided by root 5. In order to operate with multiplication or division, they have to be either outside the radical or inside the radical. You can't cross over here. So now we need to rationalize. And the way we can do this is simply by multiplying by the square root of 5. You don't have to multiply by 3 root 5 since it's getting multiplied and it's only a monomial. It's one term. We can multiply by just the radical. When we do that, we get 5 root 5 over 3 times now 5. Because square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is square root of 25. Square root of 25 is 5. So we can now simplify this down. These 5s cancel out. Ah, let me do that in red. These 5s will cancel out. So we end up with just the square root of 5 over 3. Nice job, nice job. And here are two problems for you to try. Okay, please pause the video, attempt these problems, and resume when you're ready to, to move on. All right, so if you listen to my voice, that means you've attempted example C and D. So let's go through it. Let's start out with C. I notice I have 10 over 4. I can simplify that down by 2. So I now have 5 over 2 radical 7. And in order to rationalize that denominator, I need to multiply by radical 7. So when we simplify this down, let me do it underneath. We get 5 root 7 over now 2 times 7 because the square root of 7 and square root of 7 just gives us whole 7. So we can simplify this out one more to 5 root 7 over 14. And notice how we have an integer as our denominator. So we have rationalized. Nice, sick, bruh, gnarly. All right, so for example D, we have 3 over 8 root 13. I can't simplify anything there, so I'm going to have to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the square root of 13. In doing so, we get 3 root 13 over 8 times 13. We can simplify it down, so we get, oh, here we go, we get 3 root 13 over 8 times 13, well, 8 and 3 is 24, 8 and 1 is, is 80, so then we get 104. So 3 root 13 over 104. All right, great job, everyone, so far. Okay, so now we're going to be dealing with binomials. Okay, before we dealt with monomials with one term, now we have two terms. So we're going to have a similar process, but it's going to be a little bit different. So the way that we are going to be rationalizing these here um, is we have to multiply by what's called the conjugate. The conjugate, which essentially is just we're going to be multiplying the binomial with another binomial, but just the opposite sign of the radical. So it's going to be multiplying by the opposite sign of the radical. Here is what I mean by that. And I'm going to show you both setups, and then we're going to go through and solve one by one. So I'm going to multiply by 9 minus the square root of 3. And then for the second problem, I'm going to be 6 plus the square root of 11. Because notice how we now have opposite signs. It was positive, I'm, I'm multiplying it by negative. It's negative, I'm multiplying by its positive. You see that? We see that? Awesome. Okay, so now we're going to FOIL. So, so now let's actually do the first problem. So I'm going to write it over here on the right. Okay, but what do we need to do? We multiply the denominator, so that means we need to multiply the numerator. Very good. So it's going to be 9 minus square root of 3. 
6 plus square root of 11. Because we want to multiply by 1, and anything over itself is 1. Perfect. Here we go. So let's show this. We have 5 times 9, 45. 5 times root 3 is going to be 5 root 3, but it's going to be negative. Minus 5 root 3. Over now, okay. 9 times 9 is 81. 9 times negative root 3 is going to be minus 9 root 3. Positive root 3 times 9 is going to be plus 9 root 3. Hopefully you might see something that just occurred. And now positive root 3 times negative root 3 is going to be minus whole 3. Now, what you might see, let me highlight it, is when we multiply here, we have these opposite terms. We have negative 9 root 3 and positive 9 root 3. Those go to 0, which means we just end up with 81 minus 3 in our denominator. So we have 45 minus 5 root 3 over now. Let me scroll. Maybe. There we go. Over now, 81 minus 3. So when we multiply by the conjugate, we essentially cancel out that radical. So 81 minus 3 is going to be 78. So our final answer is 45 minus 5 root 3 over 78. Awesome sauce. Nice job. Nice job. All right, let's go back to that second example. Where we're multiplying by 6 plus the square root of 11. Here we go. We got 6, let me draw a fraction, we have 6 times 7, which is 42. 7 times the square root of 11 is plus 7, 11, 7, 11. So now we're going to FOIL. 6 times 6 is 36. 6 times the square root of 11 is plus 6 root 11. Then we're going to have 6 root 11 again. It's going to be negative now. And now we're going to have minus 11. And notice again, these are going to cancel out. These are going to cancel out. So we're just left with 36 minus 11. And we can simplify that down. 42 plus 7 root 11 over 25. And that's our answer. Notice how we have an integer in our denominator. Awesome, awesome, awesome job, folks. Here we go. We got two problems for you to try. So please pause the video and then resume when you're ready to listen to the answers. All right, so if you're listening to my voice, that means you've tried E and F. Let's, let's go through it together. Oh no, it was E and F. Ah. So we have 10 over 5 minus the square root of 13. We're going to multiply by the conjugate. It's going to be 5 plus the square root of 13 in both the numerator and the denominator. We cannot forget that. So now we're going to distribute that 10 in the numerator. So we get 10 times 5 is 50 plus 10 root 13. All right, so now we're going to FOIL in the denominator, but I'm going to do a little trick here. We have 5 times 5, which is 25, and then we're going to get minus 13 because when, when we do it out, the two terms with the radical are going to cancel out anyway. So we're going to get the the two, uh, I want to say constant, the two terms that don't have a radical with it, those multiplied, and then the opposite value of what's underneath the radical. So the radical is positive 13, which means we are going to get negative 13 without a radical, hence why I just have 25 minus 13. So when we sim simplify this down, let me scroll. We get 50 plus 10 root 13 over 12. I see that I have a factor of 2 in, in all my terms here. So this really becomes 25 plus 5 root 13 over 6. And again, this came by going by 2, by 2, by 2. So this is going to be our final answer. Nice, 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 nice. And our last problem here, oh no, I, I'm out of time, but when we multiply, it's going to be 
negative root 8 plus 5. I'm out of time. Bye.